What do you think? <laughs> Since it was founded in 1985 in response to a crippling famine in Africa, Comic Relief has supported projects for disadvantaged people in the UK and around the world through its own brand of fundraising with the whole nation. <laughs> when I was a kid, there was very little information about long-term aid in Africa. There was hardly any information about charity work in this country. National campaigns like Comic Relief are moving beyond just raising money and awareness to encourage people to take actions for change. This shift offers schools the potential to get much more out of engaging with NGOs and appeals. Kids, somewhere in their brain now, have got this whole area about foreign aid and about helping people here that we didn't have back in the day. It's about winning hearts and minds as well as raising money. So I think that can be inspirational. It's important to have role models that do things to make young people think that perhaps there's something I ought to do as well. Two years on from Red Nose Day 2005, we examine the impact on primary schools and their pupils of a deeper engagement with national initiatives such as Comic Relief. Last Red Nose Day we had big big hair and beyond, you know, the, the idea with that is, you know, pupils do dress up for Red Nose Day, teachers dress up for Red Nose Day as well, you know, red wigs, red outfits, red dresses, the head of physics in a red dress, it's, you know, it's a fantastic thing, so we wanted to stimulate that. But we also wanted to sort of add a beyond bit in the sense that we wanted to get people to think that perhaps it is a bit of a journey. Actually, you're, you're doing something that's much more exciting than just getting your students to laugh, and you're getting, doing something much more exciting than just getting them to raise money. You're actually getting them to think about the world, and you're actually getting them to think about their place in it. At Lee Primary near Manchester, the teachers and pupils went beyond charity fundraising, taking a longer journey inside and outside the classroom through education and campaigning. The learning and experiences motivated the children at Lee to develop empathy with the outside world, engage with big global issues, and even take their views to Downing Street. It was a big opportunity for us because we've never met Tony Blair. I never even dreamed of meeting yeah. Dream. Yeah, Tony Blair. and it's, instead of just meeting Tony Blair on his own, we, we met McFly as well. And, and the good um, McFly. But like any primary school, the Comic Relief experience started with the usual redness and fun. Well, Comic Relief Day sort of gives me a chance to have a bit of fun with the children, really. Um, and it lets the children know that you're, you know, you're normal. And, and even though it seems like a very different day, you know, we know as teachers that we're still getting in our maths and our English and our science, but the children are having fun while they're doing it. Oh, great. So yours is one great big red nose, is it, for you two? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I did it your own design. We normally start off with an assembly to explain why um, we have um, Red Nose Day. If you're a father and you've got six children to feed, because it's about sort of raising children's awareness and you know the empathy and the citizenship and if we didn't think there was those benefits we probably wouldn't do it just for the money there's got to be other reasons for it as well. Charlie Dillock, the gardener, digs fair trade mangoes. I think the lasting benefits of getting involved in these schemes is the fact that our children aren't just concerned about you know, themselves and their families and the people in Hyde, you know, but they're also, they look beyond that. So it helps that understanding of the world around them. It gives them more global awareness, it gives them the empathy to understand other people and other, other, other countries. You know, if you link it to other children as well, they can put themselves in their places. It's only early morning, you can see the haze. All the teachers say it's so great to see young people thinking about things outside their sphere of reference, you know, thinking about people other, other than themselves. The thing to engender in children is that there are people across the world just like you who don't have what you have, and wouldn't it be great to help? In 2005, Lee Primary was one of thousands of schools to take part in the Send My Friend to School Challenge. Comic Relief, together with ActionAid, Oxfam and other partners, asked school children to take a specific action for change on behalf of the 100 million children around the world who don't have access to education. And there's an interesting statistic, I think, if every, if every girl uh, completed primary education um, 
around the world that would reduce HIV infections by 50%. You know, for me, that really shows how powerful education is as a tool. And we came up with a, a thing called Sem the Seven for My Friend to School Challenge, which we put in Red Nose Day, to represent a child who was missing out on education and to uh, send it to us and then help us deliver it to um, uh, the G8 world leaders. Well, the Send My Friend to School campaign was about children sort of uh, doing cut-out buddies and um, they all took part in that. So we had like, you know, hundreds of them and we packed them all up and sent them all. So it wasn't something that one class was getting involved. So it was a whole school event. I think the fact that we're, we're taking part, either through fundraising or through campaigning, uh, involves all pupils in slightly different ways. Uh, often you'll have pupils in schools that don't get engaged with learning because they feel that they're perhaps not very academically able and as a result they sort of retire hurt and don't make an effort. We're giving an alternative ways of learning using you know, a variety of different stimulus and you're taking part, you're actually doing an action. We're getting young people directly involved in helping to change the lives of other young people. At Lee Primary, the pupils not only became more aware of global issues, but also more skilled at political literacy. Useful when their local MP drops in for a visit. Water comes off the rocks and stuff, so it's fresh water so they can get it out of the bucket. So it's coming from deep underneath the ground, is yeah. it? Right. It was about asking him to come into school, to talk to children about his job, to talk to him about the, the problems in third world countries and to ask him to make a pledge to take our buddies back to Tony Blair um, and to say to him, you know, the children at Lee Primary School feel this is an issue and, and what will you do about it? Well, in some ways it's actually much uh, more challenging being asked questions by children because a lot of the techniques which people, which adults use with each other, you can't use with children. You just got to be completely, uh, uh, completely straightforward. So it um, it does really put politicians on the spot. And also, I think because young people are so idealistic, it just reinforces the enthusiasm that you have for trying to genuinely respond to that. In 2005, we saw a, a slight other shift. Not only were we talking about fundraising through Comic Relief, but it was campaigning as well. It was you know using your voice. Uh, and sort of advocacy, speaking on behalf of others. The shift helped galvanise schools around the country to act together with one voice, with Lee Primary joining the many schools taking their appeal direct to Downing Street. People are out there suffering and we're here um, walking about in uniforms and all they've got is rags for school. I know they're just walking. And if they're lucky, they've even got a school. I think sometimes we have a view of young people as being uh, separate from life, as if they go to these schools that are separate from their community and we're training them up so that one day they can leave, become citizens and then suddenly take part in life. Uh, and I think that's the wrong view. Young people are, are as much alive as I am uh, and have views and, on issues and can affect change. I think you made a difference because we're children and we, we know what the life is about when other children are really poor, so we have a little idea of it. When we was interviewed on News Round, we had them in like our hands on TV, just like all behind Tony Blair. And we, yeah, and we had to move them about a bit. Yeah, is there still 100 million children out of school, or have you managed to get teachers to educate them? Well, no one can be quite sure what the figure Maybe is. Maybe you were told, and yeah. um, Tony Blair, that. Um, there's a hundred million children trying to survive out there while we're in our cosy beds while they're not. Sometimes people kind of think it's hopeless. It doesn't matter how much you do, it's never really going to change. But actually, you can go to countries in Africa where as a result of the money that has come from this country, children have got the chance of an education, their parents have got the chance... You're helping develop political literacy and, you know, that has a long-term legacy. This is something that young people will take throughout their lives. They can get an awareness of how their lives have direct consequences on the lives of other people throughout the world and through their own personal choices that they make on a daily basis, they can make a difference and try and change the world, in, you know, in small but significant ways. And the Comet Relief in 2005, you know, um, built on uh, previous years and it motivated children to become involved yet again, but not in just the same way, but to give them uh, more motivation so they felt more empowered and, and started to believe in themselves, really. 
Bowes Primary in North London took a different approach to their engagement with comic relief than Lee Primaries by setting up a popular community event for Red Nose Day, an event which also successfully raised the school's profile in the local area. Teachers volunteered to be locked in the school overnight to do tasks set by the children, which had been vetted by the parent governors and PTA. There was a balancing act to do, wasn't there? Because some of the suggestions yeah. were quite extreme and frankly, sadistic. <laughs> Bless them. So you did have to be selective about which activities you were yeah. going to actually yeah. ask the teachers to do on the evening. But obviously there had to be an element of challenge. And what was really lovely was that the children came back in the afternoon, even though they weren't at school on that day, and they all assembled in the playground. And we had a formal ceremony of us actually being locked into, into the school. That the caretaker got a great big padlock and put it onto the school door. And I think a legacy of, of the 2005 Comic Relief is a much more close working relationship between the parents and the staff of the school. We tried to involve um, the whole school community um, by involving the governors, um, the parents, the children, the staff. The local press got quite involved and um, took photographs of us. It was uh, a whole community effort because we had um, sponsorship from um, a, a bank in London, from a chartered accountant, from people's ex-employers, from partners, places of work, from local developers. So it was a whole community effort. You know, there's, there's a lot talked about at the moment about, you know, schools being a part of the community and with extended schools and stuff. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a big theme. Actually, what we hope is the nose really sort of joins people together. It gives them a sort of, you know, a common moment, a common thing to, to, to connect together. And I think there aren't that many things left like that. You know, maybe the World Cup and, you know, some time ago it used to be a royal wedding and maybe it's a royal divorce now. And what I hope is Red Nose Day is that sort of, you know, that huge community event that touches, you know, millions of people in the UK. It kind of sends out the... The, the hand of education from the school, so it doesn't remain in school, that it goes out to the whole community. So all the things that you're teaching them and saying, we should be doing this, we should be buying fair trade, we should be acting in this way, we should be charitable people, we should be global citizens, you're actually modelling that in practice. Um, and it's a good message to send home to the kids and to the parents that that's the kind of school we are. With Comet Relief as well, you get the sense that you're involved in something more than just yourself. So it's not just about you learning trigonometry so that you can pass an exam. Here you're learning about issues in the world, but you're not just you doing it. You know, you're, you're undertaking some activity that your classmates are doing as well. But not just your classmates, but your whole year group are doing. Not just that your whole school are doing, your whole local community are doing, and beyond that, the whole nation is involved in a common purpose. And I think that's really exciting for young people to feel as if they're part of a national event and that they can make a difference. If we're to get enough money to go to these poorer countries, we need to be able to show that the country, our country, wants to spend that money, wants to, to, to give that, that hope and opportunity to, to other children. And therefore, when you, you run a campaign like this, it's very, very important. It's about learning how to exist in the world and, and contributing. And I think that, you know, if you can have that quality in your school, then that's a good thing. Well, I... I can certainly take these ones with me, yeah. If I take all of them, I'll be taking a lot.